uh, with Oliver, he will show you uh, the running example, and after that, you will start to uh, use the tool chain yourself. Just to motivate uh, the example, um, yeah, I just want to uh, explain what this example is about. And so here we have uh, Daimola 2024X. Um, so it's a released functionality. And uh, there's also this EFMI under the tools. And here you can um, use this load libraries function and just accept it. And this will load into your uh, package browser a whole bunch of libraries. And uh, so this is like the Daimola embedded. That's really the, uh, so to say, the template to generate your own configurations that you will be working with. And then uh, there's these EFMI configurations for the test cases. And then we have like the examples above. And these examples have been developed um, or were one uh, deliverable of the emphasis project because uh, when we delivered EFMI and the demonstrators, we also wanted to, wanted to make sure that it really works for a variety of examples. And one very nice example uh, was developed uh, by DLR. So thanks to Andreas Seifer and Martin Otter who provided this example. And that's a very nice example uh, to illustrate how you can really take advantage of uh, physics knowledge in designing a, a controller. So think about this vehicle. Uh, it has an electric drive, say, and uh, you may say, well, okay, electric drives controlling, that's a little bit boring, it's been done for decades, so, um, but it's a vehicle. So, um, and that means like how you push the pedal is supposed to translate into the force that pushes you into the seat and uh, kind of accelerates the whole thing. And that should be smooth, especially if you have kids in the back. Otherwise, you will not have fun driving. And um, to make sure that it really uh, is done in a comfortable way, um, you have to control this because the in control input goes into the motor, but what you feel is really the torque at the wheels on the road that push your uh, vehicle forward. So if you want to design a controller that translates your control signal from the pedal into a, a control signal into your motor, it's a good idea to uh, create a plant model so that you can uh, analyze uh, the behavior of the system and if you design a controller that you can just in the simulation make sure that it works. And here's a, a simplified one-dimensional uh, model of this vehicle and what we see is a very simple uh, motor model so it's just the first order uh, element and uh, the torque works perfect but then we have uh, the drive line and inertia and here we have also the mass of the vehicle and even some characteristic of the, the wind resistance. So it's a very simple plant model but um, it's uh, a good starting point and especially if we um, uh, look into this component in the drive line then we will also see that this um, model has uh, a gearbox, inertia and also a stiffness. So that means this is a, a dynamic uh, system where we can also make sure that our uh, controller that we will apply also is um, meaningful for such a system. But to start simple, uh, what could be the simpli most simplistic control strategy for such a device? So we want to control the torque at the wheel and want to provide a, a set value for the motor. So we could consider this as ideally stiff system so the gear ratio is really the only uh, constant that uh, has to be translated. So why not just take the, the command value, multiply it with the uh, gear ratio, and what we get is, is the input to our controller. And um, uh, to try this strategy, there is a, a, 
uh, a test case. This already has a closed loop, uh, but if we uh, look inside this controller that is actually used here, then it's our controller that is ignoring this additional uh, feedback signal, and it's really just feed-forward control. And if we uh, run and simulate this um, system, um, then I get the Wi-Fi settings. <laughs> uh, um, and and, uh, and we, if we uh, then uh, plot the, the signals here from, from our plant and we look at the, the load torque, then we see uh, there are some ugly uh, oscillations that we really don't want to have. And uh, we already know that our kids will hate us for this. And, uh, and therefore, uh, I mean, not desirable. So uh, what could we improve about this, this control thing? And of course, one idea is really to use a feedback signal that is measuring the, the speed difference between the, the beginning of the drivetrain and the end of the drivetrain. So if there's a, a difference, so it's faster there than at the beginning, then you have these oscillations, and that's also what we can, uh, can plot uh, in, in here if we... Uh, really plot the, the difference signal. So uh, touchpad one-handed is challenging. Uh, here, the omega. Um, and then we uh, see that also this relative velocity tells us something about the oscillation. So using that as a signal makes uh, perfect sense. But now as we're really trying to motivate um, um, a model-based control, really leveraging physical knowledge about the whole drivetrain. Um, this is uh, the control strategy then what was proposed by, by DLR. And um, what is done here is that this contains uh, a, an approximated plant model. And the, the beautiful thing about it, this is that this um, has the same driveline component in it that we have already seen in our plant model. So, in fact, we don't have to reinvent uh, the wheel, or the drive line in this case, uh, we just reuse it. Um, but the difference is that uh, it's set up in a way that it's using this inverse block. So as you see, this uh, icon here has been flipped. Um, so that means that what used to be the input of the motor torque is now the output. And what used to be the, the torque measured at the, at the wheel is now commanded as input. So it's really that we feed the torque that we want to see at the wheel into this controller. And it's the model that is computing for us in a dynamic fashion what is the torque that the motor sees. And this is not a stiff model, just calculating divided by a gear ratio, it's really taking the dynamics. We have seen the mass, we have seen the spring in it. And furthermore, we get an estimated or a desired uh, relative velocity between these uh, two angles. And all this is given to this PI controller. And what this is doing is say, well, he told me that the torque that the motor sees should be this, and on top of that, I, uh, I know what the relative velocity should be, and I have compared it with what it actually is, and then I can generate a perfect torque out of that um, using the, uh, the, the knowledge of my physical system, kind of providing a trajectory of the velocity, of the relative velocity. So quite advanced um, control but comparatively easy to set up. And um, if we now look at this uh, controlled system that is actually using this new controller that we have just uh, created. So this is the, the nice model-based control, including physics. Uh, then we can simulate this thing. Uh, and this will 
generate us uh, the exact same outputs as before so that we can nicely uh, compare the performance of this thing. And what we see now uh, looks, of course, surprise, surprise, much better. Uh, so we have uh, an, an oscillation that is highly damped, so uh, much more fun uh, to drive uh, this car. And the tricky thing now is you say, okay, this was a simulation study. Uh, it works nicely. It even has the property that it has a clock, so it's a sampled system. So we've already captured the fact that the control unit is sampled. Um, so we have all the ingredients, but now we have to pull out the equations and get it into software. And this used to be the point where the control guy would hand over to the software guy and say, well, it should work, you do the rest. Um, and, uh, and luckily, there's a nice tooling at hand, and it will be yours to figure it out now, uh, just following the, uh, the guidelines in the handout uh, to see how this can be done uh, with Daimola, TargetLink, and EFMI.